Treat yourself. Treat yourself. That's today's motto as we're working with some of the most premium beef that you could get your hands on. A5 Wagyu. And we're going to do a simple dish that truly highlights the specialty of this great meat. We're doing sushi. Let's get it. What's up everybody, James with JB Sous -Vide, and I'm so glad to have you back. If you're here to learn about sous -Vide and maximize its potential, you're in the right place. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button down below and buckle up because today we're working with some of the best beef you can get. A5 Japanese Wagyu. If you don't know, A5 denotes the grade of beef on the Japanese grading scale. The visual giveaway on this amazing beef is the intense marbling within it. Also intense on this, the price tag. That's what can make it so nerve wracking for a home cook to try and tackle. This is where sous vide can be such an asset to the home cook. I know I'm gonna get comments, just sear it, just cook it in a pan. Let me be clear, yes, searing it in a pan to a nice rare is delicious. But I know a lot of home cooks are worried about overcooking what could be a once in a lifetime treat uh, that they've decided to splurge on. Sous vide is the perfect technique to not have to even worry about overcooking this. So let's talk about what we're gonna do with it today. The selling point for this piece of beef is that it's such an intense flavor, intense marbling, uh, that we don't wanna throw a bunch of bold flavors on a plate with it. That's why we're gonna keep it simple today and make it into sushi. Uh, the sushi rice is just gonna be that hint of flavor that's just gonna elevate that great beefy flavor. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Good sushi starts with some great sushi rice. As we go through this, just know I'm not a rice king. I don't have a rice cooker. If you do want perfect rice, get yourself one of those. Since I don't have a rice cooker, this is how I do it. We're gonna start with two cups of a premium short grain rice. We'll take that rice over to the sink and wash it. We're gonna gently massage the rice till it gets murky. You can see how murky the water is empty the water and repeat this process four to six times or till the water is mostly clear. This here was my last rinse and as you can see it's mostly clear. We'll dump out our rice and let it drain for a bit while we prep our seasoning. It's pretty simple. We're gonna add four tablespoons of rice vinegar two tablespoons of sugar, one teaspoon of salt. We'll mix that and while we cook the rice, just make sure you go back to it every once in a while and stir it. We wanna make sure the sugar is fully dissolved. Back to our drained rice, we're gonna add it to our pot, add in two cups of water. We're gonna use a one to one ratio here. We'll add in some kombu and let the rice soak here for 15 minutes. After that, we'll turn up the heat to high until the water comes to a boil. Once it's at a boil, we'll cover the pot and reduce it to low and let it cook for about 15 minutes. After those 15 minutes, we'll cut off the heat and let it sit for another 15. Once that wait time is up, we can remove the kombu and fluff the rice. Transfer the rice into a big bowl and spread it out. One last stir for the seasoning and pour it on over. Now we're not gonna try and work with the rice warm. We're gonna let it come down to room temperature here. Uh, I let it sit for about an hour. In the middle of cooking your rice, you can turn to your A5. If you're just cooking the A5 and not making sushi, you don't have to cut it up pre-bath. I'm also not gonna season here with salt because I'm gonna salt individual pieces later. But if you are doing just the steak, I would add the salt right here. Since I want nice sushi pieces, I'm gonna trim this up so I can get that uh, when I cut in the end. I'm gonna use this center portion for the sushi so we don't need this extra fat here. Uh, we're gonna bag this up and take it over to the bath. Now that the beef is cooked in the sous vide, we're gonna to need to get a great sear on it. After drying it really well, we're gonna heat up our pan to high heat here. You don't need any oil in the pan. 
As you're gonna see, there's plenty of fat in this piece of beef. We'll sear here on the first side for about a minute. And sear on the other side for about 45 seconds. That's all it needs. Okay, we're gonna slice this baby up. We're slicing for sushi, so we want pieces to be wider than just the thin steak you see here. So we're gonna slice on a 45 degree angle. Look at that, nice and wide, perfect. Okay, sushi time. First thing we need to do is make sure our hands are wet so we don't have the rice stick to them. I have a little container of water and vinegar here that I'm just gonna dip my hands into. We're gonna take a ball of rice and start molding it here using a cup and press as uh, you can see I'm doing with my left hand here. I'm cupping the ball of rice and I'm pressing with my two, uh, two fingers on the right hand. We're gonna take a piece of A5 here and we're gonna mold it over the top. We're gonna make sure as we do that those sides and bottom start shaping. And there it is. Now we're just gonna repeat with the rest. I'll show you one more here. Okay, let's get over to plating it up. I'm gonna move all these to my serving tray. And to the top, each piece is gonna get a little yuzu koshu. And a sprinkle of some flaky salt. And there you have it. Let's get to eating. All right, y'all, let's see how we did. They look stunning. Look at that. Perfect. Mm. Wow, what a perfect bite. The mouthfeel of that A5 is just buttery. The texture is great. Um, that dollop on the top is a little bit of yuzu koshu. It's a nice uh, Japanese chili paste. Really great. Let's go finish this one off. Sushi is a really great application for this. Um, it just highlights that great beefy flavor. It just goes to show you how great of a tool Suvi is for this. You get the perfect texture, temperature inside without having that fear that you're gonna overcook it. Uh, this is a great, great method for home cooks that really don't wanna mess up that great beef that they got. Maybe once in a lifetime beef. It's just a simple tool that'll get you perfect results every time. That being said, I know a lot of you like it rare. That's fine. That's not what this is for. This is just to show how perfect you can get it with sous vide, no worries, no hassle, and make a great dish for your family. If you got something out of this video, go give it a like down below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and go watch some of the other videos we got for you. I'll catch you on the next time.